Now, if you follow my channel, you know I absolutely love the ThinkPad line and more specifically the X1 Carbon Gen 9 that I took a look at. Uh, if you haven't checked out my review of that, link will be in the description below. One of the best ultra portable business focused laptops here for 2021 and for good reason. But a lot of people are put off by the price, just too expensive. They want something more affordable in the ThinkPad line, but don't want to skimp on performance. They don't want to skimp on the build quality and they don't want to skimp on the display. So I just took delivery of something that might just be of interest. It's the ThinkPad X13 Gen 2 and brings a lot of the features that the X1 Carbon Gen 9 brings to the table, but not at that hefty price tag, a little bit more affordable. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the Lenovo ThinkPad X13 Gen 2. Coming up. And while we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo, I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit is on loan from Lenovo, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, the unit that Lenovo sent over is the one with the Core i5 1135G7, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigs of SSD storage, and that comes in at the price of $1,205.40. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, for those that want the AMD variant, that's not released just yet. It says coming soon over at the Lenovo website. As soon as I have any information regarding that AMD variant, as far as availability is concerned, I will, of course, let everyone know. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. You get some documentation, including some warranty information, and of course, a 65 watt USB-C power adapter, the typical Lenovo power adapter we've been seeing as of late. And you get the extension cord as well. Holding the unit for the first time, I really like this finish. It's the storm gray finish, which is a little bit, of course, different than the basic black we normally see. It also shows less fingerprints than the black as well. And at 1.38 kilograms or 3.04 pounds, it's pretty light and portable, easy to take with you on the go. Okay, let's check out the port selection. As we always do, let's start off on the left side where you get two Thunderbolt 4 ports that do data charge display out. You get an Ethernet extension port next to that, an HDMI 2.0 port, USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, and finally a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Moving over to the right side, you get another USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, a Kensington lock port, and your optional smart card reader. Notably missing, there's no SD card reader of any sort on this, which is a miss in my book. Now to get inside this laptop, Lenovo once again makes it super easy. All you need to do is loosen the captive Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. It's that easy. Now once inside, you'll notice that single fan for cooling, and you'll also notice that 54.7 watt hour battery. We'll get into the battery life and charging times in just a little bit. But as far as what's user upgradable, the RAM unfortunately is not user upgradable as it's soldered into the motherboard, although you can configure this with up to 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM. But the M.2 2280 SSD is user upgradable, so if you want to expand out the storage down the road, you have that option. Although the one that came with this review unit, the 256 gigabyte SSD, had some very good reads and writes, as you can see from the results. And as far as the wireless is concerned, you're looking at Wi-Fi 6E along with a Bluetooth 5.2 combo, and both have been working well so far. And by the way, the Wi-Fi card is not user upgradable since it's soldered into the motherboard. Now, as far as the optional wireless WAN, you can get it with either 5G or 4G LTE. And that is a nice option, especially if you're a business traveler on the go. Having that always on connection is really great for productivity on the road. 
And here's where that wireless WAN card will go. Now, I don't see any antenna leads that Lenovo gives you. So if you want to add this after the fact, after the purchase, you're out of luck. You need to add that at the time of checkout. Okay, let's talk about the display. And what we're looking at here is a 13.3 inch WUXGA display with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. That means this has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, which I'm a big fan of, meaning you can do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. You'll see more on the display when it comes to spreadsheets, Word documents, and the like. And I love the fact that this has a matte display. You'll see less glare, less reflections than you would with a glossy variant. You're looking at really deep blacks, good white points, really good contrast, and a low Delta E score of 1.61. Anything below 2 is considered good, meaning this is a color accurate display. It also covers the color gamut very well, 96% sRGB, 71% Adobe RGB, 72% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut, and 66% NTSC, making this a good choice for content creators to do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And Lenovo claims that this display will get as bright as 300 nits. I actually measured 313 above the claimed display brightness. Now, I have the non-touch variant, but there is a touchscreen option, and there is also one with a privacy guard option that will get as bright as 500 nits. And I think it's a really good choice to go with that anti-glare matte display because when you're doing spreadsheets and Word documents, you don't want any of those distractions. You just want to get your work done. And for that, this is a really nice display. Now, as far as consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube has been really nice on this as well. Even though it doesn't have the pop like, say, something like an OLED display, this still will be great on your downtime when you're not working and you want to watch a movie or watch YouTube or the like. And you will notice those bezels, which is pretty common for a business-focused convertible, but really not bad at all, actually, when you think about it. The bottom chin has been more pronounced than other laptops in this category, that's for sure. And for those wondering, there is no 4K option available. Again, those are the three options I showed you, and they all have that full HD plus resolution with that 16 to 10 aspect ratio. And that's fine by me. I don't think 4K on a 13-inch display would be really necessary. It might actually be overkill at that screen size. So that is not a big negative as far as I'm concerned. But just be aware you can't get this with a 4K display. And of course, I'm looking for better battery life. And with a 4K display, you're definitely going to take a hit in that department. So this is the front facing camera on the brand new Lenovo ThinkPad X13 Gen 2 here for 2021. We're looking at a 720p webcam. It's doing 30 frames per second. Let me know how the video quality is. Let me know how the audio is of the internal mics. I am curious to know. Now, my review unit doesn't have the infrared camera. That means you cannot log in with Windows Hello on that particular model. But there is a model with the optional infrared camera that will allow you to log in with face recognition as it is an infrared camera. Now, there is a shutter switch on this, which will give you more security and privacy by allowing you to turn off the webcam. And that's pretty good. And the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. Setup was easy and it worked well. It was fast and responsive. And like most two-in-one convertibles, you cannot open the lid with one finger. You're going to have to use two hands, and that's because the hinges are very sturdy, very rigid. And that's exactly what you want in a two-in-one convertible. That means you'll get a little bit less screen wobble. And similar to the X1 Carbon Gen 9, this has reduced key travel over the prior generation. We're now looking at 1.5 millimeters of key travel, which by any standard in terms of a thin and light laptop is still excellent. I didn't notice any reduction in terms of the quality of the keyboard. The tactile feedback is still excellent, and it was really great for typing for extended periods of time. This is that typical ThinkPad keyboard that we know and love with just slightly reduced key travel, but I didn't see that affect me in terms of my productivity work when using this keyboard and it has a two-stage backlight which allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment again it worked really well and it has a precision touchpad with physical mouse buttons which are typical of a thinkpad keyboard i thought two finger scrolling was buttery smooth all the gestures work as you'd expect it was a nicely sized touchpad as well i thought it was pretty comfortable to use as well 
And of course, it has the track point, which is the hallmark of any ThinkPad. It's pretty iconic, and I don't think it's going away anytime soon. Now, if you do use it, I thought it was actually pretty responsive. And for those that do like it, you're going to be happy that it will work as you'd expect. Okay, let's talk about performance and what this is running, as I mentioned, is the Core i5 1135G7, the 11th generation Tiger Lake processor from Intel with integrated Iris XE graphics. And as you can see from the benchmark numbers here, it did pretty well, especially for a Core i5. You can definitely do productivity work on this, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, it all worked fine. You could even do video editing on this if you limit it to 1080p. And of course, this is not a gaming laptop, but you can play some games if you lower the settings, getting playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles, as you can see from these results. And of course, you always have the option of adding an external GPU for more graphics horsepower, thanks to the two Thunderbolt 4 ports that this has. Now you will notice the single fan kick in under heavy load, but I didn't find it overly loud or terribly annoying. Now it did get quite warm under heavy load, reaching about 50 degrees Celsius on the underside of the laptop. You also notice get a little bit warm by the keyboard in the middle. The X13 Gen 2 has a 54.7 watt hour battery. That's up from last year's 48 watt hour battery in Gen 1. Now it did an amazing 15 hours and four minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 115 nits. What does that mean for real world mixed usage? You're looking at anywhere from 12 to 13 hours, depending of course what you're doing with this laptop. So your mileage may vary. So please keep that in mind. Now, if you do need to plug in, the supplied 65-watt USB-C power adapter takes about 110 minutes to give you a full charge. It only takes about 28 minutes to give you 50% charge, thanks to the rapid charge that this supports. Now, there are two stereo speakers located above the keyboard and direct the sound towards the user, which I actually do like. And the sound quality actually is not too bad, getting pretty loud. The mids are decent, and there was a hint of bass. Not too bad for a business-focused clamshell laptop. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Lenovo ThinkPad X13 Gen 2 here for 2021? I really do like it. A lot of improvements over Gen 1. The move to the 16 to 10 aspect ratio is a good one. I like the fact that it's a matte display that shows less glare and reflections. That's great for productivity. I also like the excellent keyboard, although you will notice the slightly reduced key travel down to 1.5 millimeters, still excellent nonetheless. I like that optional wireless WAN, that 5G, that you get with this that's optional of course and especially if you're a business traveler that's something to consider having the always on connection is definitely great for productivity on the road I like the really long battery life, the great port selection, especially those two Thunderbolt 4 ports, the solid performance out of that Core i5. But of course, if you want more performance, go with the Core i7. Now, the negatives, of course, as I mentioned, a little bit reduced key travel here down to 1.5 millimeters. Not a big deal. Still an excellent keyboard. 720p webcam. That wasn't too bad, but definitely want to see a 1080p webcam here in 2021. It also gets hot under heavy load, as I mentioned. There's no SD card reader, which I think is the biggest miss when it comes to the ports and the ram and wireless lan are soldered in although you can upgrade the ssd as i mentioned but there are no real deal breakers here ladies and gentlemen i'm going to give this a score of 88 percent making the thinkpad x13 gen 2 definitely worth your money so what do you think about this bad boy the x13 gen 2 here for 2021 love that beautiful storm gray finish on it you could also get it in the black of course but this storm gray finish really looks sleek it looks modern all metal design great build construction as we'd come to expect with this x series especially with this x13 gen 2 nice full hd plus display matte display anti-glare coating no unnecessary glare or reflections which i absolutely love great battery life over the last generation really good all-day battery life on this this is something we want to see good performance at that 11th gen intel tiger lake processor you can get it with a core i7 or as i have here save a few dollars core i5 performed very well as you saw from the numbers but i'm curious to know what you think let me know in the comment section below what do you think of the x13 gen 2 uh its price tag its performance and what it brings to the table in terms of the build and overall looks i am curious to know so please hit the like button please subscribe please share this video don't forget to leave a comment 
in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.